Sam Welding Day 2, A Window on Another World. I'm going to record the audio outside, just to give you a flavour of the jungle setting of our volunteer house. So apologies in advance for the racket. So, off we go to the East Valley Poverty Project HQ, up in Ban Village. The roads are pretty rough, and you tend to spend most of your time trying to avoid being battered off the windows and roof of the truck. Ban Village must be one of the biggest villages in the world. Covering over 71.2 square kilometres, it's about a third of the size of Glasgow. Once inside the charity HQ, we are introduced to the various medical and teaching staff and produce a plan to visit the six schools that are scattered all over the slopes of the Agung and Abang volcanoes. The road up to Keji School, or Chegi School as it's pronounced, our first destination, is said to be one of the best roads, but we still had jungle-covered cliffs falling away from the track and an almost uninterrupted wall of giant spider webs either side. More about that giant wood spider later. It's fair to say that since the East Valley Poverty Project started up in Ban, things have really improved from a health and sanitation perspective. Many of the villages now have road access, new schools and a much improved infrastructure. However, it's important to realise that all this change has happened in about 16 years. In Scotland, the same transition from a very ancient lifestyle took thousands of years. Cheggy School is open when we arrive. They have to leave plenty of time for the students to get to the school from the various mountain locations, as the people are very spread out. Most children get up around 5am and go out to cut grass for their cattle. These huge bundles are then perched on their heads and taken home. After this, the children make their way to school by foot, often for an hour or so, before cleaning the school grounds and rooms. They sweep outside and inside with palm brushes. They may have breakfast at the school before saying their prayers and giving thanks at the local school shrine. After this, they arrange their seats for class. I begin my first school session with some of the artwork produced by the children back home in Scotland. We talk about kilts and clans and monsters and legends, and then about writing stories. I use an imagination game from one of my workshops um, back home in Scotland, which I replicated here with the aid of, aid of a translator. We drew some original creatures and then formed some original stories with the children. Both in Chegi and in the next school, Dermaji, the children's drawings and ultimately the stories they produced were extraordinary. They came up with a tiny creature called a, a sedwa and a 150 metre 150 meter high monster called a bekbet. This would crawl out of the volcano at night and eat small children. Nice. The main reason I came to Bali in the first place is because the children of Ban Village used the Tiffy Toffee picture books to practice their English. In the past I've worked with UNICEF, ASME UK, Glasgow the Caring City Charity and various people working in Uganda um, with the Tiffy Toffee books and they've been useful for teaching young children. The children in Ban used the books at their Independence Day ceremony back in August 2014 to demonstrate their reading skills by reading the Tiffy Toffee story out loud. Now on to the features and creatures. Today's feature is going to be the traditional gubuk, a single roomed bamboo house. There are signs of change everywhere. A few yards back from the schools however, many of the people still live completely in their gubuk. This is where they eat, cook and sleep as a whole family. The structures often have an outside sitting platform raised above the ground to protect them from snakes and insects. And the gabook itself is usually no more than three by four metres square. These gabooks are slowly being replaced by lava and concrete block mixed construction. I also saw a blend of old and new, where the project out here have built much needed toilets beside the gabooks. Proper toilets prevent disease and dirt from spreading and actually save lives. So, although it might look a bit funny, it might look a bit strange, um, the old and the new together, the toilets are pretty vital. Today's creature is a giant wood spider, that one I talked about earlier. 
around 20 centimetres long. It has a web that is often over 2 metres in diameter, which often traps small birds as well as a whole variety of insects. I'm told that it actually bites. Uh, well, the people here have said so, so I'm keeping back. Um, it's the females uh, you tend to see along the roadside because they're huge. The female, the males, I should say, are very, very small, a fraction of the size, only millimetres, not centimetres. Finally, my Indonesian phrase for today is hati hati, which means take care. So listen, goodbye for now, and tune in next time for more of the Sam Wilding Bali visit.